Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome your beautiful faces back to the channel. And today's video, we are continuing the coaching series. We're starting off in bronze, and then we're going to work our way all the way up to diamond games. And I am currently looking for silver, gold, platinum, and diamond as well. So if you have any of those games, follow me on Twitter. Link down in the description box below. DM me with the link to the YouTube video, and yours will possibly get reviewed. And if you guys are new to the coaching series, this is essentially reviewing subscribers' gameplays, pointing out mistakes, and things that they could capitalize on. And we're going to leave our little watch her mark on his video boom we're good to go so it looks like their legend comp is going to be pathfinder bangalore and lifeline it's pretty solid i'm not gonna lie that's gonna be really good especially if you're getting rev sent but i wouldn't expect that in a bronze lobby unless it's a smurf account from other players playing but for the most part i'd say bronze lobbies are straightforward there's not really much crazy going on here not really gonna be strategic plays you're gonna see where people are holding hands swinging together rotating together bronze is sort of like uh definitely if you're more of a casual gamer and if you have decent aim and movement you're gonna get through bronze lobbies for sure uh, but if you only play a little bit listen this is why i'm making these videos we're gonna go bronze all the way up to diamond and i'm gonna try to touch on everything that you need to know when it comes to bronze lobbies and successfully winning and it looks like there's two different teams here if i'm not mistaken let's see how they play it So let's back it up real quick because there's a lot to talk about. Number one, when you guys flew to Elysium was the drop choice, which is not bad at all. Hydro's right there. That's a really good spot. I love landing there, especially in diamond lobbies or pred lobbies. And if you're landing contested, there's definitely enough loot for two teams, possibly three teams. But you guys decide to go to Elysium, but they're contested by two teams, as you guys saw. And they made a fantastic job by landing on the left side here because what they're doing is they're sort of sandwiching in one of the teams. So that way you're keeping all of the enemies in front of you. You don't want to get the opportunity for an enemy to land behind you at your side to get a possible flank on you. It's just going to throw your team in shambles. So you definitely want to avoid that. You guys did a very good job of where to land when you are landing contested. You can always take the zip line here to the left if you guys need to scatter out to get more loot. But yeah, this is a very solid choice to land when there's multiple teams here, especially at Elysium, because just it's a very small area. You know, you're going to get a gun and you're going to start fighting right away. First hand example. And that's some beautiful shots there with the alternator. So I'm expecting you to be at least platinum based on the grapples you've been hitting and uh, so far with your aim as well. Get the initial knock on that octane, which is beautiful. Now, this is only the first team. And I love how you're taking height right away. Assess the situation. You get great angles on height here. Crack the lifeline and you hit a beautiful grapple. I was like, right when you hit this grapple, I knew you're not a natural bronze. And a nice cleanup with the bow there. That's two down in one team looking for one. And what's shocking is that you guys are taking the first fight. Typically in a situation like this, try to avoid taking that first fight when you know there's another team local. 
especially when you get to a higher lobby, I'd say about gold and above, the other team's already going to be sent on you, aka third partying you right now. So definitely be aware of that. In this situation, you want to loot as fast as possible and start pre-aiming the angles they're going to be pushing because you know for a fact the other team is here. Uh, you have an R301 and a Bocek bow, which is not a bad setup, especially off the drop, but not too much light ammo. So pay attention to his light ammo. You have 83 bullets and your bow, I believe, has like 20 and change. So at this moment in time, I wouldn't even use my R301. Take out that bow check bow. That bow is going to be hitting for 60 plus if you're hitting headshots, who knows? But the bow is going to go large here. And right here, you're playing a beautiful head glitch on the rooftop here, uh, but you aren't crouched. So they could probably see from waist and above. So if you want to give them an even harder shot to hit you, I would stay crouched on this roof. And that's going to lower your body where they can only see chest and above. And that's where you really want to go for, especially when you want to avoid taking damage when you're going in for the first exchange like this. So you're dialed in with the 301. You see two people. That guy is purple. This is a perfect example. That bow would have cleaned one with 60 easily instead of hitting some pepper shots with the 301. Sometimes the damage is hard to put out when they have cover and they're abusing it. So, And you also would have conserved on some light ammo too. So you would have the 301 for your close range when you do make the aggressive play. That's a beautiful crack though. That guy was on a nice heady. Decent damage there as well. That's the guy with the purple armor. When you're playing bronze lobbies, people's aim and movement, I'd say from a scale of 1 to 10, people in bronze lobbies, if they're not a smurf, I'd say they're around like a 2 to 3, maybe a 1 sometimes. So they're not going to be the best in terms of aiming and movement. And when you have a strong weapon like the bow check bow, you can really take advantage of it. And you can notice right here, this revenant is literally shook. Just standing in front of a doorway, not playing his left to right cover, not peeking like a maniac. So very easy shots with the bow here. I like the movement though. There you go. Now you're torched out of light ammo. Crack the lifeline. So they're all pretty much flesh at this point. But now you got to go in with the bow. There's a beautiful shot. Oh, crack. That was a nice, nice follow up. Go for a white swap. Then I hear the lifeline to the left. Right here, this is about hit fire range with the bow. When you start aiming in, sometimes it, it can get a little bit hectic. So at this range, definitely keep your analog stick steady. Practice your hit fire shots with the bow. It's not really too hard, but you do land a nice quick scope right there for a headshot. And then you started missing some follow up shots. That's what I mean. So if you definitely take your time, hit fire it, you would have cleaned her up right away. She wouldn't have got that punch off on you. So as they're rotating here, I really want to focus on bronze lobby since for this rank series this time around, I want to really focus on what kind of players you should expect in the type of lobby that you're in. And again, for bronze lobbies, this is baseline. You're not going to get really strategic plays out of these types of players when you are versing them. So if you guys are paying attention to some of like the breakdown videos that I do, where I talk a lot about how to outplay enemies, how to outsmart enemies, and you bring that into these types of lobbies, even if your shot is not the best or your movement is not the best, you will be locking down and destroying these lobbies. No problem. So There's a guy hitting a boutique there. Some nice shots there. There you go. And definitely third party right away. Shots are going down. Definitely people knocked according to the kill feed here. I would have looked for at least a light mag or a stabilizer in that low bowl too. Since it was down, might as well use it. And it looks like your loadout's going to be Peacekeeper through a 1. You're probably going to take this throughout endgame because that's a solid loadout. Maybe if you want to swap the PK to an EVA later on when you find an EVA, that's going to be a solid choice as well. Because the EVA is absolutely broken this season. Oh my goodness, it's so disgusting. And you already have three kills and one assist, so you're almost at max KP. Laying down some nice shots on that Bangalore in there. And right here, you really wasted a grab. I don't think you should have grappled out. There's a beautiful rock here you can get right behind. Your teammates ready behind this rock, ready to lay down the shots for you to cover your back when you're trying to heal. Let it play out a bit. I guess you kind of wanted to use it to get behind the rock. Uh, but your teammate's there for the trade, which is nice. And there's a guy on the roof already. This is when I would have used the grapple to get on the roof. And it looks like you already have it again, because that was a short grab. I definitely wouldn't have climbed up here. Throw a quick grapple. This wraith wouldn't have expected it then. When you climb up, you're a little bit delayed, very slow. They can hear you. So when you have a grapple ready and you're trying to get on height, and if you know someone's on height, the grapple play is the best. It's going to be some unexpected movement to get on height and take the 1v1 on this wraith here. You get some good shots off, though. Relying back to the light mag, though. If you had a light mag, that wraith would have been one clip. Teammate gets a trade. The lifeline's the last one on your team here. Let's see if she can clutch up. 
Okay. Getting a res down. The bank gets up getting finished. And I believe there's one person left. This life line is an absolute certified beauty. Throwing down the heat shields for you. I love it. Love to see it. Nice. You got to hold. Let's go. Decked out through a one already. Okay. So you see the person he's over there. Going for the Instarez, I like it. It's only ring two. I do actually want to point this out because it's only ring two. And sometimes when I find myself playing pubs and I have lower level people that don't play the game as often, they get very scared of like the first and second ring. Ring one, you can take a whole Phoenix when you're only about one cell worth of health. So the zone is not going to tick too much. We also have the heat shields in play. So don't panic when you are in the ring. That's definitely a huge tip, I would say, if you are a, a true bronze player. So if you have an opportunity to res in zone, go for it. If that means that your teammate's going to get more loot because there's boxes in zone, 1,000% do it. You guys are working into the safe zone right here, and you're going to notice there's a lot of fighting going on, which is a really good thing. Because I, what I feel in this situation is what happened is a team was trying to gate you out, but another team had that in mind. They met each other, and then they started fighting. So this is really good for you guys because you're coming out of storm. You don't really want to try to take a fight when you're getting gate held. It's very tough, especially when you're limited on angles. While they're fighting, I would focus on getting positioning first and then closing in. So let's see if you guys play that right. So that's really big, especially when it comes to the higher lobbies. You don't really want to be shooting in zone like this. Work in zone first and then shoot. That's a beautiful knock there. Nice. Easy cleanups. But is there more? Oh. That guy already has red Evo. That lifeline is mad and she wants banner. Threw down some nice repeater shots, but you exchange as well. I think it's only one player though. Tries to stick the res. Nice. Beautiful job. Yep, six with 17. So we're only missing one player out of this entire lobby. So expect a full team when you do come across an enemy. Five kills, three assists. You got max KP sitting pretty right now. But again, since you are, I definitely don't think you're a bronze player. I believe you're a gold and above. You can go off with the kills. Go do your thing. You don't really need to play zone. But if you're a true bronze player and you have this amount of kills with this many assists, look to sort of play your zone here. Wait till this ring closes and then you got to see where you got to rotate to. There is a beacon behind you. You can potentially hit that. The ring already closed. So that's going to give you a nice rotation on where you need to position to next. Yeah, he's going for it. Let's go. And hopefully pulls out the map. That way I can see where the next zone is going to be and where you guys want to sort of position yourself. So I don't think he's going to pull up the map, but I do want to point it out. I'm sorry, again, if it's blurry. They are in a very solid spot. They don't really need to move at all for the next zone. But the current zone right now, you do have to be aware of a double flank. Flank from the wide right and from the wide left. From here and here. But this, once the second ring closes, you guys are chilling on this spot. Getting right into the mess of things. And that team flew to power grid. So they could potentially wrap behind you. Just keep that in the back of your head. Here's a better angle. And it's not as blurry. There was a team that was here. And they valked out to power grid. This is power grid. They can literally loot. And then wide wrap around. They can walk it around. And then they're behind you. Again, we touched on where's the best spot for this zone. Probably in this corner where you guys had it before. Solid spot. A lot of cover. Definitely a lot of boxes you can shoulder peek. Head glitch off of. But now you guys are pushing up in the center of the zone. Where you can get pinched from different angles. So I'm curious to see how this plays out. I love it. For those of you guys who don't know, making sure you're carrying throwables is huge in Apex. I'd say between one to three throwables based on what you're sort of carrying and if you have room for it. And the reason throwables are so good is because they create a lot of distortion in the audio. Uh, very good for entering a gunfight because then teams can't hear where you're sort of pushing from. Good for vision blocking. As you can tell from this thermite right here, they don't have an angle on you when it comes to this catwalk. Definitely make sure you're carrying throwables and throw them when you're pushing into a gunfight. Use them as an opening. I think you just threw that nade there and it ticked for flesh. So definitely get aggressive on this. 
Ooh, I almost got bamboozled. I thought that was a decoy. Two knock looking for one here. But multiple teams. You never know. Lurking in the shadows, the Wraith. Hates the Sentinel shop. It gets wiped with the 301. Love to see it. Oh my goodness. That's wiped to that spot. Four squads left. And they're definitely not full teams. You got the question mark on there. So whenever you see the question mark on the top right here, uh, there's less than 10 players in the lobby, including you and your team. So you guys are looking very good and may be the only full team alive. But who knows? I would probably post up on this head glitch right here. Get up on this hill and then you can head glitch this. Gate this whole team out and they are literally dead. There's nothing they can do. They're not going to have time to take the balloon out to rotate wide. No chance. They would have to force to push you. There's some nice shots. Let's freaking go. Absolute beauty with the triple take. Love to see it. Look at those. So you're giving them free real estate. When you sit back like this, they have a chance to rotate in and then play cover down here. That's why I say to get aggressive as soon as possible. You need to capitalize and take advantage of the opportunity given. And now you're getting 30 from the back. Good shots there. Nice. Looks like it was a solo. Classic trying to grief the game. And last team. Here we go. Squad v squad. And I doubt it's a full team. Right now, rotate as soon as possible to that bridge. Once you full heal, take this med kit. Go right to the bridge and start pre-aiming this angle. Because they have a long walk. Look at this walk. The enemy team right now is here. Okay. And they're originally weak. Because they just came out of a fight. So they're going to have to take this walk all the way down. Which there's not much cover too. Keep that in mind. So if you can get here before they have to take this walk. You have free shots of them when they have to rotate. Bangalore did a beautiful play though. That's the exact spot I was saying. To hold right there. And then they have to cross. Dead. But I like this though. Are you going to try to get some height on the left side? And surprise them? Oh, is it just one player? I only hear like one footstep audio. Hey, it's just one. Okay, GG's. I'm over here panicking, making I think it's a full squad doing this, that. Uh, but play it like that. You know, if you're playing it like that, it's just going to be much safer. You're preparing yourself for the worst, and that's going to help you get the win regardless. But overall, really good game. Very minimal mistakes. Just here and there with uh, sort of positioning wise. I'd say you can probably capitalize on, but overall, I think you did a fantastic job in the classic teabag emote there. Eight kills, 2,500 damage, absolute beauty of a game. All of you guys popped off. All of you guys had max KP. You got the max pointage you can get in this ranked game. So that's what matters, making sure you get your RP. Thank you guys for spending a couple minutes every day with me. It's always appreciated. I hope you guys learned a thing or two when it comes to bronze lobbies, if you are a true bronze. And if you are personally looking to get your video featured on the coaching series, I am currently looking for silver and above. So if you have gameplay for silver and above, if you have that footage, 720p minimum, but I am looking for 1080, of course, full game, character select to stat board send me the link on twitter and be sure to follow me and i will definitely check it out because i want to start pumping these videos out hope you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and as always this was Solon D. i'm signing off peace